Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mattia Maggioli and today I am joined once again by Dloba Gari to showcase the integration POC that we just completed about the force point next generation firewall and Azure AD Secure Hybrid. This integration POC enables administrators of the first point next generation firewall to use Azure Active Directory as an identity source inside the SMC. So Azure AD users can be used into the SMC and the roles of the SMC, like administrator or viewer, can be assigned to users of Azure Active Directory. And this enables integrated authentication and management of a fleet of next generation firewall with Azure users. But at the same time, we are also exposing the SMC as an Azure app. So the entire fleet of next generation firewalls controlled by SMC can be administered remotely according to the policies assigned to the Azure Active Directory users. Law. Yeah, uh, we'll start with the, the big picture of the integration. The Azure administrator, we create an uh, SMC app, it's basically an, an Azure app, and it will assign a user to that app. So once the user has been assigned, the Azure uh, Scheme Service will talk with the uh, Forcepoint Scheme Service in order to create uh, users in uh, Forcepoint Scheme uh, SMC. So in the diagram with the building blocks of this integration, we had a number of components, uh, either on-premise or from Azure, that customers have to configure in order to get the integration done. But do customers need to configure and deploy all those components manually? All the deployments, uh, I, uh, our integration, it, it automate it has been configured to automate as much as possible but there is some parts only customer has to do like one of the parts is has to create an app and give us the app name and other one is has to enable the uh, smc api and give us a, an access token access key that's all we need from customer to do and the rest we can do it automatically so i am in smc now i'm home click others and management service properties and all we need to be make sure this is enabled it's all okay and then we go to the configurations administrator and api client and basically here we create a new api client we give it a name and then we give a permission as a super users and all you need is to copy this key you will need it later on so i have basically created one in here i will use that one so the integration between the app configured into azure and the smc is done through the standard smc api where the application on azure is just a client to those api yeah exactly and from active directory big enterprise applications and here we new one and non-gallery application. We just give a name to our application and we need to save that name. We will need it as well later on. So, and, and now I'm in, in the machine which will host the, all the Docker containers. So in here I have uh, three files. The first one is will be a deployment.yaml that will be used only for the deployment part and it was only going to be used only once. Once the deployment part is finished and the other one is the Docker Compose services that will run all the required services. And the most important one is the environment file. This is one it will uh, contain all the our configuration. So these are the only values that the customer has to edit in order to get the automation trigger. Exactly, yeah, that's okay. all it's needed. And everything else, everything that was in the diagram that we showed earlier will be automated? Yeah. Cool. Automated. All you need, all, all the customer has to do just to configure this file and give correct information and everything will work fine. Super. Now some of the deployments into Azure normally take between 30 to 50 minutes and this is not about performance or our own code used in the integration. This is just the ordinary time used by uh, those services to be deployed into Azure. So unless you want to stay with this video for two to three hours to see everything in real time, we'll just show the deployments that we have already complete. Now this is my resource groups. So our deployment, it will actually create everything inside the resource group, which is the domain uh, Azure Active Directory domain service and some network 
components and if you go at the domain service so my domain service has been configured and its state it's running and the secure lab is also enabled so in here we have a permissions like how who can access this LDAP. so only the our docker host will be able to access this LDAP because we are specifying the our docker host api public api so only this api will be able to access now law do you map uh users and groups of Azure AD into roles? In other words, is it possible to assign a different access levels into the SMC for Azure users? Yes, that is possible. Azure administrator, what he can do, like in the deployment part, there would be some groups created by the deployment. And these groups are, these groups editor and log viewer, monitor and operator, owner, does, does look to me the very same group names that we have in the SMC. Yeah, exactly. Like it's whatever we have in SMC, the rules, we have a groups in here. So okay. all, all that minister has to do to add only add a, a user to these groups and the user will have a, a full permission in the uh, SMC. Whatever permission they give given to the user, they're going to have it there as well. So I guess we only need to see now that those users can actually log in into the SMC. Yeah. I have assigned user to, to the app. These are the users, I have four users. So here they are the users. And by default, the users, they will have a, a viewer permission. Only I have a, a change of permission for myself only. And how to log in here? Okay, basically we can just exit from here. And the password is gonna be my Azure password. And here we go, I have logged in. So in here I have logged in in Promise, but how I would log in from Azure. Good point, here. so this is the instance of the SMC browsed from within the company network, the company yeah. network of the user. Now, yeah. the you have also the, the, the Azure app equivalent of the SMC app. Yeah, exactly, like uh, somebody from outside the, the company network who has uh, who's need to access. So what it has to do, it has to go to uh, my apps. And then you can see in here, all the apps which are assigned to you and you have a right access to them. So one of them is Forcepoint SMC. I just click on it. It will take me to the Forcepoint uh, SMC. And in here I just can add my credentials that would be the uh, Azure credentials and here we go we just log okay. in via Azure now a customer might uh, question the security of exposing an inside application like the SMC as an external app through Azure but then this is not a public app. This is app that is only available to the users that pass successfully pass the authentication through Azure. And at the same time, we are actually increasing the security posture of uh, the customer and the application because the app is only available to customers that authenticate through the different steps that are opposed to Azure. So normally the SMC would only accept username and password. In this case, if the Azure account, uh, if the account of the user is uh, required to pass multi-factor authentication, it will require another layer of security before the customer can access uh, the SMC. So this is actually making it more secure. And uh, I guess everything else that happens in the background, the, the exchange of information with the scheme uh, or the LDAP secure, that is all uh, uh, encrypted, right? Yeah, that's correct. So I guess this is actually an enabler for other activities. For example, remote management of the entire fleet of next generation firewalls through the SMC exposed as, as an Azure app. And possibly this would also, uh, I mean, Law, is it possible to have uh, guest accounts into Azure to be assigned with uh, specific permissions that would give access to the SMC? Yeah, it's possible. So definitely this would become uh, also a business enabler for third parties like uh, 
security provider system integrators that would be able to control or report or advise on the configuration of the uh, install base of the next generation firewall uh, by getting access to the on-premise SMC through the Azure app. And it's at, uh, at the end, all we are doing is to be able to manage everything through the Azure, not from the SMC as well. Like administrator of the Azure will have a full control of the user authentication, changing the user groups, giving permission to them. Okay. And the, would this work together with the previous POC that we showed in a previous episode where you integrate, uh, uh, for example, the risk level from uh, tools like uh, Forcepoint CASB or Forcepoint SBA and the Active Directory? So would be authentication steps of the users accessing the SMC app be adaptive to the risk uh, provided by one of the other products? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. So thanks again, Edlo, for another great POC. I'll just do a quick recap uh, of the uh, POC itself. So this integration POC enables customers of first point and next generation firewall to have integrated authentication into the SMC with Azure Active Directory users and also to expose the SMC as an Azure application for remote management. Everything is done through a number of components that are deployed and run automatically either as Docker containers or on a traditional Linux machine. And all those components are deployed and run automatically right after a simple configuration step which is documented in our integration guide. After this is done, users of uh, SMC can be either the local ones or the Azure Active Directories and the Azure Active Directory users uh, would also authenticate to the uh, Azure app of the SMC with the extra security layers provided by Azure Active Directory. So thanks again, Law, for another great POC. Yeah, thank you, Matteo. Uh, thanks much. everyone for watching this episode of the podcast and stay tuned for more episodes.